Okay, on the next short clip of Tyler's American uh, Baking Show, which we're going to find a better name for that eventually, but mm -hmm. for now that's kind of what we're stuck with. Uh, he is going to make a paste de nata, and I think that's how you say it. I'm not entirely sure. Sure. It's a Portuguese dessert, um, and from what I can tell, it is typical in Portugal, but it comes from Belém, which is in Brazil, and, you know, Brazil's common language is Portuguese. So right now, he's starting to make the custard. With that, he has how many egg whites? Uh, six I'm egg sorry, yolks. Six egg yolks. Once again, save the egg whites for me for breakfast. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of sugar, mm -hmm. which is? Uh, I believe it's about a cup and a half. You want to say? About a cup and a half of sugar. Um, and, and if you have a glass, just do a tall glass of milk. But definitely look up the recipe online because <laughs> we're just filming this. Um, and then this looks like flour. Mm -hmm. Three tablespoons. So three tablespoons of flour, very little flour because it's the custard. We're not making the dough. He actually made the dough yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yesterday. Um, and what was in the dough? The dough has flour, salt, um, a lot of butter, and water. That's it. A lot of butter. Do you know how we know there's a lot of butter? Because when I was doing the dishes, there was still a lot of butter stuck to it. <laughs> and all the butter in the fridge is gone. And all the butter in the free. Well, we don't keep butter in the freezer, but all the butter in the fridge was gone. You can keep it in the freezer if you want it really just cold. It's true. But Eat or cut. I don't think you have to do that. So right now he's whisking together the um, egg yolks. And after that, we are going to... What are we gonna do? I don't know what we're gonna do. <laughs> um, we're gonna make it through tonight. We're gonna whisk the flour and the milk together. So we're gonna start with egg yolk, flour, milk, whisk. Yep. Uh, oh wait, no, 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 no. Medium bowl, just the flour, no egg yolks. This stays over here. The flour and then one fourth cup of the milk. So not the whole thing. So how we're gonna measure a fourth of a cup out of here, I'm not really sure. I got you. But I think we're gonna use one of the two measuring cups, this is gonna be interesting, um, that he bought from Central Market to make this work. Next step, we are going to take, not we, because I always feel like I'm in control and I have to let that go. Mm -hmm. Tyler is going to take the water, sugar, and cinnamon, mm -hmm. and he's going to uh, boil into a bowl. Mm -hmm. So this is his cinnamon. It is a pain to grate right. it, but you kind of have to do it. So you Get can it. do one of two things. You can pay a decent amount of money for a bunch of cinnamon sticks. Typically, you're going to use those to more so uh, kind of like simmer into a liquid so it infuses cinnamon into the liquid. But this is going to be in the actual custard. So you can't mm -hmm. just bake the cinnamon stick because you don't want to eat a cinnamon stick. It's mm -hmm. kind of disgusting. And it doesn't taste good. Yeah. Um, so he's going to boil that. Yep. Until it is what? Until it is 220 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to use this new thermometer that Michael bought me. Michael went to Central Market today and bought him a digital thermometer so I don't have to stick my hands into the burning sugar and burn myself anymore. Right. It gives you Fahrenheit and Celsius. Yes, and it is digital. Analog is for... Cowards. Not that, but just people who don't get the digital. So, simultaneously, while Tyler is um, boiling the cinnamon, sugar, and water, mm -hmm. he's also going to uh, what's called scald the milk. Mm -hmm. Now, scalding milk is an old English term that uh, is typically used for unpasteurized milk. It breaks down proteins, it removes bacteria, um, and it adjusts the enzyme, so it's more of a cohesive agent when he combines it with his flour mixture. I didn't so once know that. He, he learns something new every day. Um, so we're gonna take the milk as it's scalded, mm -hmm. which is to 180 degrees, mm -hmm. and he is going to pour it into the flour first and mix that together. After that happens, once the sugar and uh, water and cinnamon stick have reached the desired temperature, we're gonna remove it from the stovetop, take out the cinnamon stick, and mix it in with the flour scalded milk concoction. Yes. Uh, after that, we're gonna strain it, and we're gonna use a colander. Why? Because we don't have a strainer, and a colander is right. just gonna have to work. So what happens when you can't do something in a kitchen? You, you improvise. It's amazing how many times uh, in a restaurant you think that things just like 
naturally happen or you're like, how do you get the water to heat faster? You take a sheet pan and you cover the pot. Why? Traps the heat in, makes it boil faster. So lots of little tips and tricks in the kitchen, um, which can make it a lot of fun because all of a sudden you're out of friends and they're trying to cook something. They're like, it's not heating up enough. You know what to do. Uh, when Tyler was cracking open his eggs earlier, he kept dropping some eggshells into the egg whites. But, you know, you try and fish it out with your finger and it, like, moves. It's like one of those, like, video games where it's like the closer you get, it just sponges across the screen. I don't play video games, but something of that sort. Uh, a trick to that, also spoons don't work. They run away from spoons. But if you use the actual eggshell to dip in and get the little pieces out, it almost acts like a magnet. So it kind of pulls to them and it's much easier to get out. I didn't know that either. Now I do. <laughs> and this is how you learn. We have our mixer. Gonna put it over, the, or not our mixer, our strainer. We're gonna put it over this bowl and he's gonna have to do it very precisely in the middle of the bowl mm -hmm. to make sure that it doesn't splatter on the counter, cause a lot of mess. Yeah, could you give me a fork actually? Yes. I just need to get this cinnamon out of here. Get that cinnamon stick. Here, I got this. D-D, D-D, D-D. I had this experience in Thailand once where we got to feed elephants and play with them and every time they did something good, we'd be like, D-D, D-D. I don't even know if they recognized it, but that's what they told us to do, so that's what we did. That's what we did. So now I'll say D-D. All right, you ready? Okay. This is gonna splash everywhere. Not really, just do it slow. Okay. It's gonna also run it's down gonna run the, the side, side a little bit, yeah. but it's okay because it's still gonna drip gonna from this that. one point. Going very slowly, yeah. so I don't want it to splash everywhere. So. It splashes on me, it's okay, I get burned all the time. Yeah, it's fine if he gets burned. In life, in the kitchen, you name it. Good lord. There we go. That's it. Now what this really does, I'm not quite sure. I think it's supposed to get out any type of little, I, I don't know, fragments from cinnamon or goodies that exist in this mixture. You don't want to be enjoying this if you bite down on a little shard of cinnamon. No. That's gross. I also feel you would get stuck in your teeth. It's disgusting. And then it's like a popcorn kernel. Right. You know the one that sits back here for like 30 minutes and all you do is use your tongue and you're like... <sighs> a new friend who had to have surgery to get one of those out. I don't believe that because I think God. that's insane. That's why we have toothpicks. Oh also why we brush our teeth. Maybe so while we're waiting on the milk to scald, I'm taking once again our favorite utensil in the kitchen. Peter Cottontail. It really is the favorite. It is the favorite. Eggs. Baking, scraping, also known as a rubber spatula. Um, this bowl is not gonna be big enough for him to add the sugar, water, cinnamon mixture, and the scalding milk. So seriously, this is the best utensil in a restaurant. And if you're one who's pinching pennies in a restaurant, this is gonna be your best friend. Jars of mayonnaise when you're making salad dressings. It literally will get all of the products off of the sides of the vessel per se. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this for him. Thank you. While he studies his recipe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we're gonna ask Tyler, what made you decide to cook this lovely custard? I thought it looked pretty. <laughs> it comes out looking like a, um, it's sort of like a creme brulee. Um, it, I don't know, it's kind of a sweet little Custard, and I've never made a custard, and I've wanted to, and I've never made um, pastry, and I've wanted to try that too. So, this is so both. he hasn't ever really made a true custard like a creme brulee. He's he's saying that, but this is more like a creme brulee that that fits in uh, a pastry shell, mm -hmm. which we'll get to that. The pastry's in the fridge still, and we'll go over how he's going to do that, how he's going to cut it. He had to cut it to a specific length. 18 by 21 inches. He used his art tools for that. These things come in handy all the time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the milk should be about ready. Okay, so the milk is scalded. And he's about to slowly add it to the previous flour mixture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's fun to watch a pro at work and not have to do anything because oh. I kind of want to do it for him, but I can't. No. Mm. As you can see the steam coming off of it. We never got it to an actual boil. I think boiling is 210 or 212, um, which I could be very wrong. So what he's going to do now is he's going to make the mix this in, and then he's going to add the vanilla. He's only adding half a teaspoon of vanilla. Not very much. 
I think it should be more, but my personal taste. Some people get overwhelmed with the flavor of vanilla because it's an extract, whatnot. Um, if we had vanilla beans, that would be incredible because then we could show you how to cut them and get all the vanilla out. Mm. But we don't. <laughs> Very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next is to pour the cinnamon mix into this. Do you want to do that? Do you Why? do vanilla in it? Uh, no, that comes after that. Oh, vanilla comes after. Yeah. So this is our cinnamon water sugar. As you can see, it's got a little brownness to it, which mm -hmm. comes from the cinnamon. Nice. And we're going to slowly add it. And by slowly, we'll see how that goes. If you burn me. Burn, <laughs> baby, burn. It's going to burn up. There we go. Perfect. Beautiful. Perfect. Thank you. No. Then... Let's see. Soak this in hot water to dissolve the sugar. You obviously cannot put this on the stove top to make all of this heat and go away. But if you put it in like really hot water, it'll go ahead and dissolve or else you're gonna have to deal with this really sticky paste. Which tastes quite nice. <laughs> kind of like Christmas. So I'm gonna do that. And Tyler's next step, he's gonna have to whisk this for a minute. Why? Why? Because it's a very hot liquid. Mm -hmm. Not quite boiling, but it almost got there. Uh, so when you make creme brulees and you have to, you do what's called tempering. And I don't know if tempering actually is involved in the same way because you're more so adding hot milk to egg yolks when you make creme brulees. In this method with, how do we say it? Uh, Paste stanata. Paste stanata. I think. We think. Uh, he's gonna add the egg yolks to this mixture. So he wants to mix it for a little minute just because if he adds it too hot, what it's gonna do is it's gonna curdle the eggs, basically cook them. Don't and when that, that happens, you're gonna taste egg. You're not gonna taste custard. The sweetness will still be there, but it tastes like scrambled eggs. And if you want scrambled eggs, I'll, I don't know, make don't you make a scrambled egg. I'll make you a quiche. <laughs> yeah, this I is think that's good. I'm gonna test this. I wash my hands all the time, like 25 times a day. He says. Feels good, feels good. It's warm, but not hot. I'm gonna add some vanilla, half a teaspoon, which isn't very much. If it overflows a little bit, I'm not gonna be mad. No one's gonna be mad. I'm gonna be angry. There we go. Ooh, cool. Ooh, nice fluorescent brown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looks delicious. <laughs> Okay, whisk that so in. he's gonna whisk that in. And by the way, our whisk today is a fork. We yeah. have a whisk, but we're using a fork. It's fine. It Actually, we don't have a whisk. We don't. We have whisk beaters, but we don't have a whisk whisk. I think I took it to an event like three years ago, <clears throat> and it stayed at the event. Someone at Whole Foods the other day, and it was about $18, so. Don't buy things at Whole Foods. Go to Marshalls or TJ Maxx mm -hmm. or Home Goods. Not even Home Goods. Or even Central Market or HEB. H E B over Central Market. Central Market's a little bit more expensive. I am frugal. Um, anyway, so where where would I go to an event where I take a whisk? You're like a person's dinner party and they don't have one? No. So I'm on the board for the Austin Food and Wine Alliance, which is a nonprofit that supports uh, culinary grants for local businesses who are starting up in Austin. Uh, we've benefited Skull and Crossbones, Seriously Chocolate, Compitoras. Um, and basically they apply to help their business get up and running because we like to support local in Austin. Um, so with this, with the Austin Food and Wine Alliance, we give away grants anywhere from $2,500 to $15,000. We have donors from Whole Foods. We have a bunch of really good sponsors who really help us out. And it's uh, one of the best organizations that I've been a part of. But we have two main events every year. We have Live Fire and Wine and Swine. And um, we have our past grant recipients come and they have their booths and they showcase their food and it gets everyone really involved in the community. And every single year, ticket sales go up. I think when I started, we were selling out at 500 or 550, and now we sell out at like 850 or 900, and it's pretty fantastic. So, if you ever want to contribute to the Austin Food and Wine Alliance, go to austinfoodandwineallance.org, and you can find a donations page where you can gladly give anything. Uh, we take dollar donations, ten dollar donations, hundred dollar do donations, or a thousand. Um, also what this goes to is the Culinary Arts Conference, which every year we bring 600 students throughout the state of Texas. You can go ahead and start mixing that in. Mm -hmm. We bring 600 students in and they are all 
they compete for the best omelet, the best pastry, and they really get a feel for the, you know, the culinary world. And they get to hear great speakers and how they started their businesses and what they did. And it's just, it's a really good cause to give back to the community um, because we all go out to eat, right? Tyler, do you go out to eat? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I don't cook. <laughs> he doesn't cook. <laughs> Today, he had chicken masala. From uh, Trader Joe's. From Trader Joe's. And it was damn good. And it smelled delicious. I was very jealous. So, as you can see, the egg yolks are in here. And he is just going to lightly mix this up. This is quite thin, to be honest. And that's because it's not cooked through yet. So, it's okay that it's thin because you're yep. like, oh, I'm going to pour this into a pastry. And it's going to be basically like drinking egg yolks. No, it's not. But we're going to do that. This can actually stay good in the fridge for up to three days. Um, any custard kind of tan can. After a custard dessert stays in a fridge, if it's not covered with saran wrap, it starts to taste metallic. It pulls on that metal flavor from the fridge. Yeah, so you, you don't want custard that tastes like a fridge. No. Maybe you do. No, you don't. I've never had a metal custard. <laughs> but we're gonna let this sit for a second, let it cool a little bit, and then uh, start on assembling the pastries. So the next part is Tyler has his dough. Mm -hmm. um, which he is going to, are you going to use a rolling pin or use your hand? Um, I'm going to use my hands at first because it's pretty cold okay. and not super pliable at the moment. Sounds good to me. So He also did the same thing as he did with the key lime pie crust. He lightly dusted the counter with flour. That way it doesn't mm -hmm. stick to the counter um, with how much butter and sugar is in it. Mm -hmm. the, the flour helps. Um, in the actual crust, you have two cups minus two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, mm -hmm. uh, a fourth a teaspoon of sea salt, three-fourths a cup, plus two tablespoons of cold water and eight ounces of unsalted butter. Room temperature. Mm -hmm. That helps you when you mix it. Um, if you do melt it, it, it gets too mushy, and it's, it's not really like a crust anymore. So mm -hmm. this is kind of nice to watch. Um, and until the actual log is... Uh, 16, 16 inches. Yeah. Where are we at now? We're at, We're at eight. Nine. We're at nine. We're at nine. Just, that means we have seven more to go. It started at seven and we've got two. So yeah, seven to go. So he's going to need a little work on this. So we'll be back. Some time. Okay. So he has now rolled this out to a solid 16 inches. Mm -hmm. um, he's going to cut off a little bit of the end just to make sure everything's congruent. So we actually did about 16 and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, to give him a little room to play with. And it looks really nice. Um, right here on the end, you can kind of see the circle of how he rolled it out. Mm -hmm. And he's going to put it up against his art ruler <laughs> and cut it inch by inch. And after he cuts them inch by inch, we're going to let them sit for a second. Uh, oh, that's perfect. You see this? See this? Look at that. Subtle little ring pattern. Little ring pattern. Um, and there is a little hole in it, but that's okay because we're going to mold it to our tin pan. And so technically this should make 16 custard pastry desserts. Would be a really good thing if you were having a dinner party or if you needed to take something to someone and you love to bake and you have all the time in the world, which we don't, by the way. It's 10 p.m. on Saturday, Saturday during South By in Austin, Texas, which means we are not fighting traffic. Instead, Tyler is baking. We are inside. We are inside. Also, I am kneeled down because when I bend over like that, all the blood rushes to my face and I get very red. You can't see my face. The face is baker. It's also because I'm still recording this on my iPhone without a tripod. My tripod is a stack of books. I'm not hiding. He's not hiding. But he does have the nickname Ninja for a reason. Okay, we're gonna let these chill for a minute. And when we come back, um, our nice non-stick pan, we're going to start, I'm not going to start, he is going to start molding these into each little cup, and we'll go from there. Yeah. Okay, so, Tyler has what looks like little marshmallows, or dim sum, whatever mm -hmm. you prefer. Little sushis. Little sushis, sushis. And he is going to carefully fold them to fit in these little pie tins. Mm -hmm. So we have exactly 12. Yep. 
Sorry, I currently have a dog also trying to get in on this action. <laughs> <laughs> because he's never in the kitchen, they're always over here and they're like, what are you What's doing? What's wrong with you? Everything. I made a, uh, yeah, so what you're gonna do is you basically put this in the pie tin, uh, mush, whatever you call this, muffin tin, and just kind of push it out to fill out the sides. So, so as he does this, he's going to actually make um, the bottom of it a little bit thinner than the mm -hmm. sides. That gives it a nice consistency on the sides. It also makes it look more like a pie mm -hmm. or like a little mini tart, mm -hmm. which is good. Also, he, you can't see this because he strategically places things far away from what he's doing. That's right. And it is a little cup of water. And if you've ever rolled your own wontons or done your own like uh, dumplings, you keep a little water on the side. And when you fold the wonton over or the dumpling, the water activates the flour and it creates uh, almost like a binding agent. So that's what keeps the wontons and dumplings folded. This is hard. I made a C plus in ceramics in college, so. He made a C plus and he's very smart. I made a B plus in ceramics. Um, I also went every single day, I did every single project and I thought I did really well. And then the girl who didn't go every day and who didn't do 100%, she got an A. I was very mad about it. I wrote a nice letter to the university that they disregarded, but my pride is still broken. <laughs> so we're about halfway done and this is very tedious and probably why I don't do baking at all. But I admire him for this because it's pushing me to my limit. 100%. But I kind of wanted to show you the way that we're forming these. These. I'm taking the marshmallow. And the center of this, I start to push in and mold out. It's almost like you're on a ceramics wheel or what, what I'm thinking is what it's very similar to. Uh, by pulling the dough up to the edges. So you start with your little bitty cup and you just work it. Also, we've never been to Portugal, neither one of us. Mm -mm. We've also never eaten one of these. Nope. We've seen pictures. The great British baking show has shown Tyler a lot and I catch like an episode every like six. They make it look so... Easy. Easy. Everything looks so easy about baking, but let me tell you, it is not. It is not. But I'm, I like it. It's a challenge. It's different. It's creative. It's tedious. And it can be therapeutic. It is therapeutic, honestly. I mean, it's you know, a lot of people find interior design therapeutic. They like to shop. People are like, let me go spend money. That's therapeutic. It is. So about when I get to this stage and I have a nice little bird's nest, what I'm doing and what Tyler is doing also is we put them into the pan, little tin, and start to spread them out. Uh, like I said, the bottom doesn't want to be, you don't want to have holes in it, but it does want to be a little bit thinner than the sides. That way it looks like your nice little pie with a crust. And my thought on this is they need to be little. They need to be a little pastry. It's supposed to be a one bite thing. And you're supposed to actually eat them the day that you make them. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense. So tonight, when this happens in about the next 45 minutes, it's going to be about 10, 15, and we're each going to have four to five <laughs> pasta de donata. That's right. And, and that one looks sad. That one does look sad, <laughs> that one's but it's map. okay. Remember, we are amateurs. Um, I'm thrilled about this because it's pushing me to new levels, and it's exciting to see my roommate cook because he wants to learn. <laughs> my voices are horrible. No, they're good. See how the blood rushes to my face? It gets really red. Anyway, so, boom. Just to give you a little bitty preview. Oh, God. Do not judge. <laughs> Let me get my phone off my tripod. <laughs> um, they make these nice little pastries. See? Little bird's nest, we're gonna fill those with custard. Also, we had to preheat the oven to 550 degrees. Which is high. Which is very high. And I think it's <laughs> almost too high. But, um, because our oven won't go that high. It only goes to 525. And we're gonna bake them for anywhere between 15 and 17 minutes with the custard. And we'll show you once they... All right, so we're, he's now spooning the custard 
into its little pie shell. It says to fill it about three fourths full. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Yep. Yep. Um, it's a little tedious and it does look just like it's gonna be eggs, but we're gonna see how it turns out. I have faith that it's gonna look good. Yeah. Um, and when we're finished, what he's going to do is he's going to take some of the ground cinnamon and powdered sugar and sprinkle them on top just as a nice garnish. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also do a little mint if you wanna do a little mint. Um, True. I'm just here to make fun of myself. Yeah. Some of these look a little sleepy, but we're learning. We are learning. Go on a little more. I think sleepy's a good word, where the dough's kind of like, I don't know what I'm doing. Casual. Casual. Informal. Informal. Not sleepy. <laughs> sleepy makes it sound like you're going to bite into it, and it's just going to be like mm. flavorless, which... Which could be the case also. We don't quite know yet. To be determined, but... TBD. This one is large. I keep spooning stuff into it. <gasps> Oven's, Oven's ready. ready. Perfect timing. Country boy. Oh, God. Oh, we God. also have all these weird things that we see on YouTube or memes or whatnot that we really like to just spurt out to each other. I spent <laughs> a few weeks ago watching Lost, Ooh. and John Locke is always like, Hello, James. <laughs> Hello, Hugo. Hello, Hugo. You were just waiting for me to do that, weren't you? I was. I love it. I, I don't know. I know <laughs> when I see his dog, I'm like, hello, Yo-Yo. <laughs> his dog's name is Yoshi. He's a Shiba Inu. He keeps sniffing around. He wants... He Yoshi wants whatever. Space. It doesn't even matter. He didn't care. No. All right. Time to pop these in the oven. How do they say it on the show? What does old Greg say? Uh, Time to... Oh. Bake! Bake! <laughs> right. Okay, so <laughs> we finished the first round... Uh, set off the fire alarm twice. twice, and I'm not really sure why. I don't know why our oven does that. Um, probably because we live in an apartment and it's not proper ventilation. Um, but they do look quite nice. They do. So, it. got it. Had this nice little like crust, Boop. custard inside. We're gonna take them out. We're gonna set them on a cooling rack um, to let them chill for cool. a minute. Cool, and then dress them. Okay, so we finished the first round. They look pretty good. Uh, not only do they look good, they taste awesome. And they're not curdled. They were kind of bubbly in the oven, which worried me. Worried him. <laughs> but uh, these look good. The second go round, Tyler cut them about, what, an inch and a quarter? Mm -hmm. More of an inch and a quarter because we didn't feel like we had a lot to work with. And we have more of a bird's nest bowl shape. So you can actually see the bowl and you have more room to fill it with custard because we have a lot of custard left over. So we're gonna um, put these back in for another 15 to 17 minutes and see how they come out and then we'll see them side by side and we'll taste them side by side and see what we think. Okay, so we have our final product. We have our first round that are a little bit thinner a little sleepier, a little, <laughs> little more casual, but we're gonna try them next to each other. So we're gonna taste this and see what we think. Mmm. Yeah, that's pretty good. First bite, crust, fantastic. I don't wanna say flawless because <laughs> I'm a perfectionist, but the crunch on it, the amount it was baked, it's light, it's airy, it's so crisp, almost like a croissant, like buttery. I mentioned earlier, buttery. But the custard has a really good balance of sugar to egg and even the vanilla. You just get it <clears> slightly <throat> in there. And it kind of hits you on the front of the palate, not so much on the back. What do you think? It's good. It's, uh, it's sweet. It's not too sugary. Um, it's not that kind of sickly sweet, mm -hmm. literally subtle. Yeah. Sugar. It's not too sharp. No. Also, I think there's a good balance between the crust and the custard. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, uh, you know, with the key lime pie that we made, the custard was very dominating and you still got the crust, it was still there, but this is a good balance between the two. Now, we have ours that are a little bit thicker. Round two. And this looks dark, but mm -hmm. it's not at all. It's golden brown and perfect. And hot. Mm-hmm. And delicious. They're very good. They're very good. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
Not bad at all. Nope. I'm gonna eat the rest of this. <laughs> it's so good. Actually, we have 11 more to eat. Because mm -hmm. I forgot that we had to make two rounds. Mm -hmm. So we have extras. And I can see why these are a Portuguese delicacy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, thank you again for watching Cooking with Coleman mm -hmm. while Tyler bakes. Because I did pretty much nothing except for open ovens and clean dishes in the background. That's true. And uh, if you want to see any more fun videos, go to HelloEatery.com. Thanks so much.